the heaven and the earth. Right. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. Right. And darkness was upon us the face of the deep. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of the most high moved upon the face of the water. So we see that darkness was upon the face of the water. The earth was without form and void. It was empty. It was barren. Right? And spirit was, uh, the spirit of Mosai was upon the face of the water and the deep. It was absolute darkness. Verse 3. Verse 3. And the Mosai said, let there be light. So notice, we are now in darkness, right? The whole universe as we know it is absolute darkness. And the Mosai said, let there be light. So now light is established. Go ahead. And, and there was light. Right. Verse 4. And the Mosai saw the light that it was good. So he saw the light that it was good. Go ahead. And the Most High did, divided the light from the darkness. So light came out of darkness, right? So there was darkness first, and light came out of it. Go ahead. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. And the Most High called the light day. So notice, he called the light day. But here's, here's something we have to understand. He called the light day. There's no time on this. It doesn't say he called the light day because it was six in the morning. He didn't call the light day because it was midday. He called the light day. It's a name. It's Yom. That's all it is, is day, right? And it can be any amount of hours for all we know because there's no time set here. There's no time precedent yet. Go ahead. In the darkness. In the darkness, he called night. So he called the darkness night. So this is key right here. Go ahead. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So the evening and the morning were the first day. The night and evening is interchangeable, right? So light came from darkness, right? And the evening, darkness, and the morning, light, was the first day. Evening, darkness, then light, because that's how it started. In darkness, then light came. That completes the first day. The day ends with darkness. It begins with darkness, right? In the middle is that light. Go ahead to the next verse, 6. Verse 6. So now this is the important thing. So watch this now. Go ahead. And the Most High said, let there be a firmament. Let there be a firmament. We went over this word before. Firmament in Hebrew is rakia, which means ark, a hard dome, right? Fashioned with his hand, right? Because we read also later in the Psalms that with the, the firmament is his handiwork, right? So it's handiwork, I mean it's fashioned a certain shape, right? They use the word expanse sometimes as a definition, but the danger and the problem with that is by saying expanse, there's no set limit to expanse. Again, you're going back into an infinite universe again. That's the way of tricking you back into going outside the firmament again. Firmament, hard, dome shape, art, right? Go ahead. So, and let there be a firmament, right? Go ahead. In the midst of the water. In the midst of the water. So there's a firmament now in the middle of the water. So that just means everything is water. So now he puts something in the middle of the water. Go ahead. And let and let it divide the waters from the water. So now the waters are separated, right? So now there's a whole, the waters have separated. Go ahead. Verse 7. And the mm -hmm. Most High made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament. Then divided the waters which were under the firmament. Go ahead from the waters which were above the firmament. So the firmament sits in the middle. So there's water down on the earth and there's waters above. That's proven right there. Go ahead. Verse 8. And the Most High called the firmament heaven. So now the firmament is the establishment of where heaven is, or where it starts. The firmament he called heaven. Go ahead. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Again, notice the evening and the morning were the second day, right? So now let's see what happens Really quick, uh, read to, actually just read verse 9. I want to show you something. I don't want to go deep into that. Verse 9. So notice, what it said in the beginning, right? And it got, in verse 3, right, it said, and Yahweh said, let there be light, and there was light, right? So now we have a firmament. So now it's separated. So now look what happens on the earth. Read verse 9. And the Most High said, let the waters under the heaven be so, gathered. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Salakia, uh, not nine, verse 14. I'm sorry about that. Skip down to verse 14. And the Most High said, let there be lights in the firmament. So notice, let there be lights in the firmament, right? So right now, we're at the beginning of the fourth day, right? The fourth day. Let there be lights in the firmament. So that means the firmament was in darkness. 
So now we have two separations now. So we have light, we have darkness in the beginning, and then light came. Now that there's a firmament, he's doing the same thing again. Let there be lights in the firmament. So he's declaring it a second time. Now there's light in the firmament. Go ahead. In the firmament, uh, let, let there be lights in the firmament. Of the heaven to divide the day from the night. So now it's dark in the firmament. So now he's dividing day from light from night in the firmament. Go ahead. And let them be for signs. For signs, go ahead. And for seasons. Uh-huh. And for days uh -huh. and years. So this is the establishment of time as we know it. Right? Because before he declared what the day was. This is now how we keep up. But notice in this portion, uh, we're going to read to 19. We're at the beginning of the fourth day. Go ahead. Wait, notice this. The beginning of the fourth day. Fourth day, he said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the night from the day. Signs, seasons, so on and so forth. Go ahead, 15. Verse 15. Uh-huh. And let them be for lights in the firmament. So now let it be for lights in the firmament because the, also in the firmament was darkness. Go ahead. Of the heaven to give a... To give light upon the earth. And to give light upon the earth. So the earth, the earth was in darkness. He said, let there be lights. And he put lights in. Go ahead. And it was so. Uh-huh. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And the Most High made two great lights. Right. The greater light to rule the day. The sun. And the lesser light to rule the night. The moon. He made the stars also. So now, notice above the firmament is water. In here now... We have light now. On the fourth day, we have light and stars. It is underneath that firmament. Go ahead. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. The Most High set them in the firmament of the heaven. So he set them in the firmament. He keeps saying he set them in the firmament. Go ahead. To give light upon the earth. Right. Verse 18. And to rule over the day uh -huh. and over the night. Right. And to divide the light from the darkness. And the Most High saw that it was good. So notice he said the same thing he said at the beginning. And he saw that it was good. Right? Go ahead. Verse 19. And the evening and the morning were the fourth, fourth day. So the evening and the morning is the fourth day. So now, we utilize the sun and the sunset to help us connect to the Sabbath. Right? The evening and the morning. If it was the case that it was solely by the sun, you would be off. There'd be no way you can do it. It has to be the evening and then the day. Because the sun wasn't made until the fourth day. So in order for you to start, if you started following here, you wouldn't start following until the, technically the 11th day is when your Sabbath would be. And you'd be off from where the Most High was. It's impossible. He set what day it was. So on day four, the sun was created. He already started to count to day seven. If you start from the sun, your count is off. That's why it's the evening and the darkness. So anyone that's, oh no, it has to be the day, that's not how the beginning started. It was already the fourth day when this sun was made. So if you're using that, you're using something three days after the fact. Right? So just to show that that doesn't make sense. Right? Because the sun, that's, that's how we kept up with it. Right? Okay, so... Also, right, uh, what else are we going to go with? Uh, right, so you'd be on a Wednesday. And didn't y'all say a brother years ago used to say that? That the Sabbath was on a Wednesday or something like that, or a Tuesday? When you just count seven days there, right? Something like that, yeah. yeah. See, and like, if, if you followed it this pattern, it would be on a Wednesday. And it'd be totally wrong. Because the most high, again, is on the fourth day, and then the sun just came. So there's no way you're counting, oh, well, you got to count from the light, from the mm -mm -mm. Don't work like that. This is to keep up with the time you already said. Right? So let's go to Genesis chapter 11 and verse 1. So now we're going to get to the point of the whole Jeff Bezos and Edomite history. From the book of Genesis, chapter 11, verse 1. Yeah, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to call each verse, just read. Oh, just read? Yeah, okay. just read. I'll, I'll let you know when it's done. And the whole earth was of one language and of one and of one speech. So, as, as we see, that we're talking about Babylon here. One language, one speech. This is, this is kind of how the world is trying to go now, backwards, to a new world order where everything is one country, one language, and one world. This is the origin of the new world order right here. Right, go ahead. Uh, verse 2, mm -hmm. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of mm -hmm. Shinar. Right. 
and they dwelt there. Right. Verse 3, and they said one to another, Go, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. Mm -hmm. Verse 4, and they said, Go to let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto, unto heaven. So notice this, they said, Go and let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. We establish in Genesis 1 that the heaven that heaven is at the firmament. Uh -huh. So right now, this is the height they want to extend to, to the firmament. Because they feel if they can get there and if possibly they can crack that open, mm -hmm. they'd be amongst the where the most high is. So they want to get unto heaven. This is the establishment of the first skyscraper. So you got to ask the question about the term skyscraper. What are you scraping in the sky? You're trying to build to the point where you scrape or hit something because you're trying to get that high. And keep that theme in your mind of trying to elevate. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And they said, Go to let us build us a city mm -hmm. and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. Right. And let us make us a name. Right. So they want to make a name now. They want to be powerful. They want to be somebody in the earth. Uh huh. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So they had an idea of what was coming. That we'd be scattered abroad trying to do this. Well, let's try to make us a name and try to get this done. Go ahead. Verse 5. And the Most High came down to see the city and the tower uh -huh. which the children of man built. Uh -huh. Verse 6. And the Most High said, Behold, the people is one. So behold, the people is one. So this is similar to what's going to happen when he comes. Because the people, it's not going to be every person, but all the governments and all the kings and authorities, the people will be one. Go ahead. And, and have one, and have all one language. And all one language. If you notice the trend over the years as far as business and monetary things go, everybody in every country has to speak English. Right? Because this is where Babylon is. This is the spiritual Babylon. So it's showing you the same exact thing happening all over again. Except this time it's going to be scattered and destroyed. Go ahead. And this they begin to do. Mm -hmm. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Same sort of thing, which they imagine to do. So now nothing's restrained because we're all giving our consent to these wicked people. And they're not restraining what they do and how they affect us. Uh-huh. Uh, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. Right, so they scattered everybody, they took, so, well, they're about to scatter everybody, so they destroyed the language so they couldn't communicate with each other, go ahead. So the Most High scattered them abroad from mm -hmm. thence upon the face of all the earth, mm -hmm. and, and they let off to build the city. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, mm -hmm. therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the, the Most High did there confound the language of all the earth. So this is why it's called Babylon, because the confusion of languages. It's also the confusion now, it's the confusion of philosophies and religions and belief in all these things. Because the language we all pretty much got, but now we're confused in numerous other ways. So this is how essentially how we got to the point we are now with all the languages. So now we're gonna go deeper into what the purpose of this left lesson is about Jeff Bezos and all the Edomites and their desire to reach heaven. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. Fallen from heaven, 
Oh, Lucifer. Right. Of the morning. Hold up, hold up, slow it down. So it's Isaiah 14 and 12. How are, what? Read that again. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? So how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? So he fell from above, right? Go ahead. How art thou cut down to the ground, which did is weaken the nations? Right, he's cut down to the ground, which weakened the nations. That example is also in Babylon, right? That tower they built all the way up, and it was cut down. And then now they will weaken from it. Go ahead. Uh, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. So this is what the majority, this is what that oneness of that world did. Mm -hmm. They said we will build us a, a tower to reach unto heaven. Right. So the spirit of Satan and those wicked demons were in the people. Uh, because essentially by their action, they're doing what Satan was declaring to do. Right? Go ahead. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So notice. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Where are the stars? In the firmament. So his goal is to get past the stars, right? So I'll save that for later. His goal is to get past the stars. Go ahead. Verse 13. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Remember his words. Go ahead. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Uh-huh. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. So he will also sit upon the mount of the congregation. Go ahead. In the sides of the north. Uh-huh. Verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. So he's going to ascend above the heights of the clouds. Uh-huh. I will be like the most high. I will be like the most high. So if you notice throughout all this book, with the exception of Babylon, no one else tried to reach that height. No one else tried to get to the point of being at or above the most high. So this is unique amongst them. And when you think about, without even being racist, how we talk about Esau being the devil, everything he does is to reach that height. Every building he makes, he tries to control everything. Every time he goes to space, he tries to go above it. He tries to claim, oh, this is this way, and whatever the case is. Literally doing what Satan left off doing. Trying to reach and get his throne above. Trying to reach the stars. Because he already set his image as God, as we're here in this country, right? He has his image as the Christ and everything else. He said, the Most High says evolution, and that's a lot. The Most High says creation, he says evolution. He is anti-God, he is anti-Christ. So he's showing himself by his actions to be one of the children of Satan. He wants his throne to be above the stars. He wants to be seen as God in every country throughout this earth. He wants to run the new world order. He has to be in charge of everything, right? So we read verse 14. Uh, whoops, I closed that on me, it's a lot. Give me a second. Uh, now let's go to Obadiah. Mm. And we're going to read uh, from one to four. Again, because Jeff Bezos did not go to space. But, and if you look, as we see the times are coming to an end, mm -hmm. his desire mm -hmm. to make it to the throne of the Most High is pushing him to huh. keep going. Huh. Even if he, know, he knows he can't make it, but he wants you to think that he can make it so he can maintain his position as God on this earth. Huh. Huh. Every rule is made by him. They sanction again. How do you sanction somebody in another country that's not yours? <laughs> Unless the earth is yours. Huh. Unless you're the God of this earth. And you're the devil the Bible speaks of. That's right. It's the only way that starts to make sense because he matches the description of not only Edom, he matches the description of Satan. Right. Uh, right. Satan by action, Edom by who he is. Uh, and the Gentiles because they mixed in also. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, the original Gentiles, that is. So uh, Obadiah 1 to 4. The version of Obadiah. Vision. Is, hmm? Vision. Oh, oh, so long. The vision of Obadiah. Thus says the Most High concerning Edom. So notice, thus saith the Most High concerning Edom. Edom, the white man. 
This is who we're talking about. Go ahead. We have heard a rumor from the Most High. Uh huh. And an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Right. Arise ye and let up and let us rise up against her in battle. Mm hmm. So yeah. go ahead. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly displeased. So despised. Oh, so, so notice. Edom. He says, Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. He was a small group. He's a small group now on this earth. By sorcery, by trickery, by subliminal messages, by a magnifying glass called a television, he makes himself look bigger. He makes himself greater. He's, when he puts the television on, he's all over the world. Every country he shows you, it's his face or a lighter version of those people that look like him and that act like him. He is the wizard in the Wizard of Oz. He's that small man behind that curtain, right? And the only thing we need to do is read these scriptures so we can pull that curtain back and see how small he is amongst everybody. He's small and minute, but he gives off the image through the television that he's great and powerful. It's not to say he doesn't have weapons and he won't kill you but he's not as powerful as he makes himself out to be. Even he has the power of the Most High behind him because the Most High said no man will free him. So this is the only reason he's powerful because let's say the Most High left it open and we took his weapons away, what would he do? Nothing. Without his weapons, he can't do anything. He has the cunning, he has the wickedness, but he didn't have the actual power. The Most High had to give him that power. He had to give him that blessing to rule the fat of the earth. This is why he's able to do it. This is why an all black world can get dominated by a small white group. Because we broke the law, statutes, and commandments. That's why he's powerful, by no other reason. He has no power. So he said, so in verse three he says, um, what was it, two? He said, behold, I have made thee small among the heathen, thou art greatly despised. You can read that in the peopling of mankind, as I repeat a lot, from Benjamin Franklin. He said that Anglo-Saxons and the English are the only white people on the planet. And that was 1757. So you know how much a short time this white man took over? That had to be the power of the Most High. He couldn't do that. And that short from, what is that? 300 years ago? Less. Less than 300 years he took over a whole planet? That's the power of the Most High behind him because we broke those laws. That's right. right? Go ahead. Verse 3. The pride of thy heart hath deceived thee. So the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. He's always talking about American pride. Pride, this is all of this. This is God countries. He's always proud. Go ahead. Thou that dwellest in the cluster of the rocks. This so-called white man here is the same one that dwells in the clefts of the rock. That tells you their history, oh, we were cavemen and all this other stuff, which is the Horites that were in the Bible. They even went and killed the Horites and took over their caves. So they are all over. So they're telling you who they are. That's why they made the Geico commercial to show you this. This is why they made those, uh, what was that movie in the 80s? It was some caveman movie, it was a comedy. Oh, uh, whatever it was. Caveman. Caveman or whatever it was, right? So they made those movies telling you their history indirectly. They always give you clues to what's really going on. It's just they put it in movies and things that are fictional in hopes that you see it, but you won't acknowledge it. And at the same time, this is how Satan, when he goes back to the Most High and he brings accusations against you, I told him that we did this, but he ignored it. I showed him I had, I had five cards with three of them facing him, but he still wanted to bet and he lost the bet. He gives you the information. You just have to be aware and see it. You gotta read the scriptures, keep the law, statutes, and commandments, so that spirit, that set apart spirit can come in you and start to show you these things. So you're not blinded by anything, right? So pride, a heart full of pride. He was the original caveman, so this is not only the clubs of the rock, if we spend this up to now. Skyscrapers, he's always high above, which is why he uses the eagle as his animal. The one that looks down and sees everything. Mm -hmm. And it's also a, uh, what's it, a bird of prey. It seeks to kill. It's a beautiful bird, it's magnificent, but it is a killer. And it destroys, and it looks from above and looks down on whom it can destroy. Right, go ahead. Uh, verse four, don't thou exalt thyself uh, as the evil. You're not finished with three. The cleft of the rock, whose habitation. Oh, so 
whose habitation is high. Whose habitation is high. So not only in pride and not only positions around the world, mm -hmm. literal dwelling places is high. His house right. is extra right. big. Right. There's super skyscrapers right. and all of this. Spiritually and physically, he's high above everybody else, right? Go ahead. That said in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Exactly. That's what pride does. He's like, wait a minute. We're the greatest country in the world. Trump keeps saying that. Right. I'm surprised Biden hasn't said it. Right. But Trump and everybody else says that. We're the greatest country. Who's gonna? Who can do it? The people. You, If you're around Edomites all the time, you hear it at work. Yo, this is America. What they need to do is go over there and kill those guys. So you're willing to kill a whole nation just so you don't get touched. You know, kill the kids, just bomb them, wipe them off the earth. Animals, bro. Mopes. All that other stuff they say, right? So this is how he thinks. So again, that same television, that's where his God is. Again, magnification of pride and everything else. His God is in the television. His thought process comes from the television. His messengers come from the television. Whatever it says, he reflects it. So if that racism is being subconsciously pushed, he's going to start acting it out. Because mm -hmm. they say, oh, look what the blacks do. All of a sudden, white people are racist. Again. Let me not say that it's not new. Again. So he said, who's going to bring me down? This is our country. This is great. Look what they're doing. Now, mind you, you worried about the niggas, but we don't live nowhere near you. Look what they're doing. Your neighborhood is fine. That is nowhere near you, but you're worried about it. That shows how he's connected to that God in that television. Right, right. It's a, that's that's where his spirituality comes from. Television. Uh, uh. Television says something. Oh, you know we're we're super religious. We are super religious. Oh, those niggas destroying it. They are destroying everything. Yeah. America's great. America is great. He repeats like a parrot, right? Before I get off the point, right? Uh, so who shall bring me down? Notice verse four. Thou should thou though though thou. Exalt thyself as the eagle. Again, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, that is his bird. That is his symbol. The Most High, and how shall I acknowledge who he calls himself? Though you exalt yourself as the eagle, uh huh. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. So though thou set thy nest amongst the stars, this is misused uh, by Israelites as space for some reason. We literally read in Genesis 1 that this is in the firmament along with the sun and the moon. Uh, so exalting yourself amongst the stars is still under the firmament. Uh, you will uh, never go past that. Because uh, to go past that is to say you can reach the throne of the Most High and you cannot and will not. Uh, so that means you are limited. Now if you want to say the space between the stars and the firmament, you probably made it. There. Mm -hmm. But you ain't getting past that. So space, and again if you look it up, um, I forgot the uh, federation, and there's one federation of uh, France and Canada and other ones. They literally said space is between 60 and 70 miles in the Earth's atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 60 or 70 miles. We hear, oh, 3,000. No, no, no. You can't go that far. <laughs> Barack Obama, when he was president, said you can't. We, we have to get out of low Earth orbit. That's 500 miles. Mm -hmm. But the actual science centers are saying 60 miles, and they don't know where space starts. They admit that. So where the hell did Jeff Bezos go? <laughs> Nowhere. He floated up in the air. He might have flew around. He might have saw darkness, and that was the end of it. He might have seen a few stars. He did uh, not go anywhere else. Again, just like the Tower of Babel, you thought you were going to build that up here? I'm taking that down. Mm -hmm. Satan, you thought you was going to come above my throne? You got sent down. The Most High just said to them, although you exalt yourself as the eagle and set your nest amongst the stars, he said right after that, what, will I? Thence will I bring thee down. Thence will I bring thee down. So he's going to bring down Edom. He's going to bring down Satan and anyone that tries to exalt himself. This is why he said, no man shall free you or buy you. Because I shall bring thee down. So we literally have to do our part and wait for it to happen. When we go in Corinthians, Paul said, if our obedience is fulfilled, then we can take vengeance. So why wouldn't we want to be a vessel and use in that takedown of Eden? Literally obeying the Most High can get you a prize of taking down Eden. That's a great prize. To be able to take down your enemy by obeying your Creator. That's awesome. That's awesome. So now, all right, we read verse 4. So we see that it was talking about Edom who's going amongst the stars, always wants to build an Edom who's harboring Satan's spirit. Right? So now, let's go to... 2nd Corinthians 
And we're going to go to one of my favorites, chapter 4. So we're going to 2 Corinthians, mm -hmm. chapter 4, and we're going to read up to verse 4. Chapter 4. Mm -hmm. 1 through 4. Yep. <clears throat> read for the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. So we receive mercy. We faint not. So uh, all the things, whether we do uh, we do things wrong and we repent, we have this mercy to continue on the mission that the Mashiach set us out to do. Go ahead. Verse 2. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Right. So we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, things that we most like. When we do things that are dishonest or we do things wrong, we try to hide it. So we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. Go ahead. Not walking in craftiness. Right, we're not plotting to do wrong. Uh huh. Nor handling the word of the Most High deceitfully. We're not using this to lie and gain power over people. Uh -huh. We're trying to use this word to get people to remember who they are and empower them. Go ahead. That's right. But by manifest manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience mm -hmm. in the sight of the Most High. So we're trying to commend ourselves to every man's conscience. We're trying to put ourselves in their brain with these words so they remember who they are. Go ahead. But if our gospel be hid, right, so if the words be hid, go ahead, it is hid to them that are lost. And we see this every day now. Every day that we go out, if the words, if it's hid, mm -hmm. it's hid to them that are lost. Sure. They have no understanding of what we're saying, uh, nor do they care, like it says, nor do they consider. Mm -hmm. It's hid to them because they're lost. Go ahead. Verse 4. In whom the power of this world... Oh no, you can read it, it's God. Because that's... Oh God, yeah. that's true. Uh, verse 4. In whom the God of this world mm -hmm. has blinded the minds of them which believe not. So the God of this world, notice he made it, he distinguished the God of this world, the God beneath the firmament. That's where, that's the location of this world. Because it's not just talking about, it's not talking about Israel here. It's talking about the entire planet now. The God of this world. The God that is beneath the firmament. Go ahead. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Hamashiach Yahushai, mm. who is in the image of the Most High, should shine unto them. Right. So notice again. So the God of this world blinded the minds of the people. So the gospel is hid to them. Unless... The light of the uh, the light of the glorious gospel of the Mashiach, who's the image of the Most High, shine unto them. So this is just like in the beginning, because it started with darkness. Unless that light shine unto them, right, and that new day begins mm -hmm. from darkness to light. That's when that day begins if they get this knowledge. So we and see also, who. Ah, uh -huh, go ahead. Also, that the tower. Mm -hmm. He said, "Let me tear that down, lest they build it right. and live forever." Exactly. Exactly. So he had to stop that. So everything repeats itself. It just shows up in a different form. And it's the same thing happening over and over. The Bible is redundant because it needs us to get the picture. It's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this in 8 million different ways in hopes that you understand what I'm trying to tell you. Right? So again, so now let's go to Romans. What's up? What was that long chapter? Second Corinthians. Four, one through four. One through four. Okay. So now we're going to go to Romans chapter 10 and verse 6. If, if you can get that, um, Zach, okay, okay, okay. and you get uh, Shaquat, you get go back to Isaiah 14. Yeah, as soon as you get it, we'll start. Uh, no, uh, we'll you can hold off. Okay. Isaiah 14, and you're going to go to verse, hold on. Um, no, you're going to go, you're going to read verses 13 and 14. You read first, and then I want you to read. Isaiah 13 and 14. Isaiah 14, verse 13 and 14. For thou hast said in thine heart. Pay attention. For thou hast said in thine heart, go ahead. I will ascend into heaven. I will ascend into heaven. Go ahead. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Above the stars of Yahweh. Go ahead. I will set also upon the mount of the congregation uh -huh. and the sides of the north. Go ahead. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. 
I will be like the Most High. So this is Satan speaking. So now, let's go to, uh, where did I have you go? That's a lot. Romans, oh, Romans chapter 10. 10 verse 6. Oh, look. Yeah. I didn't even get there. I'm still in another verse. <laughs> Romans chapter 10 verse and verse 6. Let me make sure I'm with that. Uh, Go ahead. So now, read this. Read it for Pay the book. attention to what we just heard Satan say, and look what Paul is telling you. Go ahead. Read it for the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 6. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, saying, not in thy heart. Say, not in thine heart. Satan said, what in his heart? Go ahead. Who shall ascend into heaven? Say, not in thine heart. Who shall ascend into heaven? He's telling you. Okay. Don't say who's going to ascend into heaven. Because by saying that, you're repeating the step Satan made. Go ahead. That is to bring Hamashiach Yehawashai down from above. Because if you exalt yourself that high, you're trying to bring him down to the earth. You're trying to make yourself God. So he's saying, who shall ascend himself? Don't say in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring the Mashiach down. So if you're thinking of yourself going there, you must want him to come down here. Go ahead. Verse 7. Or who shall descend into the deep. Mm -hmm. That is to bring up Hamashiach Yahawashai again from the dead. Again from the dead. So he's telling you not to say this. So, But notice what he says, don't say in your heart, because that's where Satan reaches you at, in your mind. Don't say this in your mind, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring the Mashiach down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up the Mashiach again from the dead. So this is taking on the behavior of Satan. Mm -hmm. The mind as it whispers in you thinking, well, who can reach this height? Who can, you start to question, you start to take on his spirit. Mm -hmm. So Paul is telling you not to say this. He's indirectly quoting what was said in Isaiah from mm -hmm. Satan, right? So now let's go to John, right? So we have to uh, establish something important here. Let me be looking on time. All right, uh, I'm gonna wrap this up. John 14 and 17, right? I'll cut some of these out. Uh, 14 and 17? Yeah, John chapter 14 and 17. So I want to show a comparison. Damn, I can't find no books there. It was right in Romans when I was in the first place, John. Okay, uh, John 14 and 17. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, mm -hmm. because it seeth him not, mm -hmm. neither knoweth him. Right. But ye know him, right. for, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So the spirit of truth shall dwell with you and be in you, mm -hmm. right? Just like we know if we have the Mashiach, we have Yahweh with us, right? Uh, go to Acts 7 and 48. Read it for the book. How be it? Uh, he got it. Okay. Read it for the book of Acts 7, verse 48. Uh -huh. How be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples, made with hands not with temples made with hands as saith the prophet so notice this so if you have the most high if you have the mashiach the most high is with you right mm -hmm. how be it the most high does not dwell in temples made with hand mm -hmm. so we're starting to see where the spirit of the most high is dwelling right mm -hmm. let's go to acts 17 and 24. Mm -hmm. And all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven uh -huh. and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Made with hands. So we're confirming he doesn't dwell in temples made with hands, right? So now, last we're going to confirm this the last time, and then we're going to go into this specific verse, and you're going to see how all of this comes together. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. So this is 
another, so everybody knows John 3.16, so we're going to know 1 Corinthians 3.16. Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. Go ahead. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Most High. So you are the temple of the Most High. So we're driving that point home. You are the temple of the Most High. Go ahead. And that the Spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you. So he dwells in you. Go ahead. Verse 17. If any man defile the temple of the Most High. Right. Him shall the Most High destroy. Mm -hmm. For the temple of the Most High is holy. Which temple ye are. So he dwells in you. You are the temple of the Most High. And it is holy. If you pollute or poison that temple. Be it philosophies, foods or however. He will destroy you. Because right. you are holy. Right? right? So now. Let's drive the point home. Now let's go to 2 Thessalonians. And we're going to tie this together and wrap it up. Mm -hmm. 2 Thessalonians uh, 2, chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 1 through 4. Hold up, should I wait? No, 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 I wish I stepped out. But, uh, all right, we'll go ahead. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 to 4. Reading for the book oh. of 2 Thessalonians. Go ahead, Mm-hmm. Read, read, yeah, yeah, yeah. read from the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Go ahead. Verse 1. Now, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our uh, coming of the Hamashiach to mm -hmm. and by our gathering together unto him. Right. That ye be not soon shaken in mind. That ye be not soon shaken in mind. Confused. Go ahead. Or be troubled, right? Neither by spirit, right? Nor by word, right? Neither by spirit. If anyone else's spirit comes by you, nor by word. Go ahead. Nor by letter, as of as from us. Nor by letter, as from us. Nothing that we write you should disrupt you, or should confuse you, or should put you off. Go ahead. As the day of Hamashiach is at hand. So this is a warning for today also. Because it says, don't be soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, by word, or letter from us, as in this book, as the day of the Mashiach is at hand. This is current right now, this letter that he wrote to the Thessalonians. Because we see that the day of the Mashiach is at hand, so he's telling you not to be troubled by any of these things. We're in 2 Thessalonians, uh, one, chapter 2, 1 through 4. Okay, read verse 3. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. So notice what he's saying. Let no man deceive you by any means. He's reiterating. Go ahead. For that day shall come, not shall not come mm -hmm. except there come a falling away first. So we're seeing that the falling away is happening, right? Uh -huh. From the churches, from every institution that calls itself God, or anything that tries to be religious, there is a falling away. People are even detaching from mysticism, mm -hmm. right? And they're becoming more carnal as time goes on. Go ahead. And that man of sin be revealed. And we know that's around the corner, right? The son of perdition, right? So I want you to pay attention to verse 4. Read. Verse 4. Who opposes. Opposes. Of Slakia. Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called the Most High. So who opposes and exalted himself above. All that is called the Most High. All that is called God. Esau's entire existence is exalting himself above. Though thy exalt thyself as the eagle above, I will go above the stars amongst amongst the stars above the throne of the Most High. Right. So this is the son of perdition. Now he's talking about who opposes and exalted himself. All that is called God. Mm -hmm. The Most High dwells in temples. Right. Not by hands, that's in you. My people who are called by my name. 
So he exalts himself over the people of God, doesn't yeah. he? Mm -hmm. And yeah. puts us as slaves and puts us under his foot because anything that has Yahweh's name attached to it, he will exalt himself above it. Huh. If it's in the sky, if it's the stars, if it's people, if his name is there, he will exalt himself above it. Mm -hmm. This is shown through Esau's actions. He has the spirit of Satan. There might be a handful that don't have it, but the majority have that wicked spirit. Mm -hmm. They have to be above you in all things. Mm -hmm. They have to have a better story when you come with one. Mm -hmm. They got to have a better vehicle than you, a better right. house. Right. Anything that calls itself God, they are better. They have to be more religious and more spiritual than you are. Mm -hmm. Now they're trying to mimic how we do in the church right. and everything else. They're trying to mimic everything. He exalts himself above. He opposes. Notice, opposes again. The Most High says creation. Mm -hmm. Nope. It's not creation, it's evolution. Mm -hmm. The Most High tells you to read his word, nope, science. Mm -hmm. Opposes and exalts himself above all that is called the Most High. Uh -huh. Or Go that ahead. is worship. Or that is worship. Go ahead. So that he, as as the Most High sitteth, you say he is God. He is God, uh -huh. sitteth in the temple of the Most High. Right. Showing himself that he is God. So notice what was just said here. Right? It says, mm -hmm. so he as God sitteth in the temple mm -hmm. of Yahweh. Did we not read four times? What's the temple? Mm -hmm. You are. Mm -hmm. He doesn't dwell in a temple made, made by hands. Made by so he sitteth in the temple of Yahweh, showing himself that he is Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So when the lies and the deceit comes, he sits in your temple, mm -hmm. showing himself that he's God. Uh, well. So this is the, how the lies and deceits come in. So in order for him to do what he does, he has to get into your temple and exalt himself as the Most High. So when you go with it, you push his program, that he's above everything else. When you go, you agree with Jeff Bezos made it to space, he sat in your temple and put himself above God. This is what this is saying. You are that temple. He opposes and exalts himself above anything called God. You are the head, right? The Most High is the head of the body, is he not? Good, and they call good. up the body, so he has to exalt to exalt himself as the head to control mm -hmm. how the body operates mm -hmm. in the earth, mm -hmm. right? right? So this is also the Most High said when he said to Solomon, who's going to make me a sanctuary, right? Mm -hmm. A sanctuary is a holy place, good. right? A church. It's also a temple, mm -hmm. right? The earth is also a sanctuary, right? Mm -hmm. Because he sits above it, the sanctuary is beneath it, mm -hmm. right? So if he's locked in this dome, I have to get at least to the top of the dome and control everything beneath me. Mm -hmm. That's also other way of trying to exalt himself as the most high yeah. and control the temple, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's not, he has to stay underfoot. He can't get past that. Yeah. So if I can't get past him, I'm gonna control you niggas. Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you deviate from this word. I'm gonna make you not understand this word. I'm gonna do all these things. I'm gonna exalt and oppose you. And I'm gonna put myself above you. That's the temple that we have to be worried about. Mm. Because anything can be built, but if this temple is ruined, we yeah. read early, the most high will destroy you. Mm -hmm. You let him get to the top of that temple and don't get him out, he will destroy you. Mm -hmm. This is why fasting, prayer, and reading of the word and putting on the arm is done so he cannot get to that temple. God, so we God. can shake him out. That's why he said resist the devil and he'll flee from you. God. Get him out of that temple. Right. Whatever you have to do, starve him out. Mm -hmm. That's what fasting is, starve him. Mm -hmm. Like, damn, if he keeps feeding his body, I can hold on, but now, now, now he's taking out these foods because these foods I made to help control that body mm -hmm. so I can make the mind go off. Mm -hmm. Starve, mm -hmm. so the most I took, starve him out and pray. Because now he's going to have to flee. There's too much pain and anguish for him to focus on messing you up. And then your brain gets clear. So you understand? So you are that temple. You are where he wants to go. Right? Because he can't physically make it there. So he has to kill you. You're made the image and the likeness of the Most High. So he has to oppose you. You are called after the name of the Father. Anything called God, he opposes and exalts himself. So you got to be his slave. That's why he's after us. You are, we are his representation and his temple. So if I can't make it there, I'm conquering you niggas. Mm. And with that, I'm gonna say shalom.